हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दीपक पांडे हियर योर गाइड एंड मेंटर फॉर गेट 2020 केमिकल इंजीनियरिंग सो व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस हियर इन दिस एपिसोड आई हैव सिलेक्टेड सम प्रॉब्लम्स द स्टूडेंट्स आर कंटिन्यूअसली रिक्वेस्टिंग टू गिव एक्सप्लेनेशन फॉर सम प्रॉब्लम्स बट आउट ऑफ दोस क्वेश्चंस आई हैव सिलेक्टेड फोर प्रॉब्लम्स एंड इन दिस एपिसोड आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस द एक्सप्लेनेशन एंड द कांसेप्ट्स बिहाइंड दोस प्रॉब्लम्स द फर्स्ट प्रॉब्लम आई एम टेकिंग फ्रॉम मास ट्रांसफर so in this problem there is a conical vessel you can call this as a tapered cone you can call this as a conical vessel you can call this as a frustum it is a section of a cone fine this direction is direction z and this direction is direction r in this vessel up to some height water is filled and at this surrounding temperature at the ambient temperature the water is getting evaporated in the upward direction so the water molecules are getting evaporated and they are diffusing in the z direction fine air is flowing over it and the water molecules are carried away the process is steady state temperature pressure are constant the problem asks that what is the concentration profile or which of the following options the relation was given between na z and all so they are correct for this particular case so first of all you should consider this problem as a problem of variable area diffusion i hope you have studied that diffusion can take place through vessels or through you know shapes having constant area as well as variable area so what is the difference between these two flux is defined as rate by area please note that this is not surface area this is the area which is the area available for diffusion now what is that area at this point the area is a circle of higher radius at this point the area is a circle of smaller radius but it is a circle so the cross section area is pi r square okay now flux is rate by area if it is a steady state process for any steady state process you can always think that rate is going to be constant fine now the area of diffusion is not constant here so flux which is something constant divided by something which is variable so flux is going to be variable here but definitely rate has to be constant area is also variable but they are varying such a way in such a manner that rate is constant so we can say that flux into area must be constant whenever you solve a problem of variable area diffusion you should think about this equation that flux into area should always be constant now what is flux what is evaporating here water let us denote the water species by w so what is the flux of water that is nw clear w denotes water what is the area of cross section please do not make a mistake do not write the surface area of the cone that is not used for diffusion what is being used here the cross section area flux into area must be constant so whether you talk at this point at this position at this position at this position at any value of z the value of rate must be constant so can i say that d by dz of flux into area which is constant must be zero so how you are going to get this idea you just check the option the option starts with d by dz d by dz d by dz so definitely you have to get some hint some ideas from the options as well this is the smart way of attempting a problem do not just read the question and then start the problem solving in any direction always check the options as well you will get some idea some direction in which you have to start the problem so because the flux into area term is constant is it is uh, whether you talk about this position or this position or this position the rate is not going to vary so d by dz of this into area is always constant now if you know that this case is the air diffusing through non diffusing because the air is not diffusing into water only water is diffusing into air and for this case you can remember the fundamental equation that nw is equal to jw which is the fick's law plus mole fraction of water vapor multiplied by nw it is actually nw plus mole for uh, n of air but because it is air diffusing through non diffusing b so n of air must be zero which can be written as nw into 1 minus xw is equal to jw clear the what is nw nw is equal to jw divided by 1 minus xw 
Now what is JW? By using the fixed law, you can always write what is JW. So this question says d by dz of nw into pi r square is equal to 0, pi is constant, r square, a. okay, can you take r square out of d by dz? The answer is no. Because as z changes, r square r also changes, therefore r is a function of z, you cannot take it out. So let us uh, write this expression as nw is equal to, what is jw? Uh, minus dab diffusivity, right? into d c a uh, the a is not this species okay so d c w let's write divided by d z if it is partial pressure you can also write this c w in terms of partial pressure fine uh, divided by 1 minus x w clear now there are various ways of writing this expression c w can be written as p w by r t depending upon the options again okay c w can also be written as some kind of average concentration multiplied by mole fraction of water so you can write this as minus d a b i think the options are not using d a b they are just using d so d stands for diffusivity no need to get confused or worried so this can be written as some kind of average concentration multiplied by xw xw into c is giving you cw divided by dz and then 1 minus xw now simply put this expression of nw in the given x, uh, final expression which says d by dz of nw which is dab i'm not using negative sign the negative sign is going on the right hand side and then becoming zero dab into c average divided by 1 minus xw into dxw by dz the entire thing is nw and then it must be multiplied by r square so i hope this r square is visible to you and this should be equal to zero see how easy problem nothing to be worried nothing to get uh, you know panicked uh, when you see these kind of problems first read the problem most of the times the problem is quite lengthy when you read it but when you start solving it when you start applying the concept you are going to find that the problem will be solved hardly in four or five minutes See, in gate examination, it is not possible to provide such a problem which takes, you know, 15 minutes to 20 minutes to solve the problem. The paper is managed so well that an average student who has prepared everything, suppose student is an ideal student, he knows everything, then he can easily attempt, he or she can easily attempt the paper in three hours using the virtual calculator and in that situation, you know. So even if you see uh, such a big problem, the language seems so big, do not be worried attempt other questions first attempt other questions and when you have time attempt this problem okay so this was the first problem based on variable area mass transfer right so let us take the second problem The second problem is from the heat transfer concept, okay. It discusses the heat exchanger and it can check your understanding of logarithmic mean of temperature differences and how to analyze the heat duty or heat load in a heat exchanger. There are two cases, case one and case two. Most of the students are confused in this problem. They don't know how they are getting the answer. Even if they know the correct answer, they are not able to explain them themselves. And then they are making the wrong concepts by reading the wrong solutions provided in many uh, at many websites, in many coaching books and all, right? So what is the correct solution and what is the explanation? Please listen carefully. Suppose in case one, there is a heat exchanger. There is a stream which is coming from here. The stream enters at a temperature T1 and exit at a temperature T2. A stream is coming from here. It enters at a small temperature T1 and exits at a temperature T2. Okay. Now small t denotes the temperature of the cold stream. The capital T denotes temperature of the hot stream. Fine. So this is T1 and T2. In case 2, It comes at temperature T1 okay, 
and exits at temperature T2. Right? But here there is a difference. The stream which enters at temperature T1 is also bypassed. And then mixed with the stream coming out of this heat exchanger. However, the final temperature is T2 only, which is same as before. All these information are provided in the question. Fine. So I'm again explaining what is given here. There are two heat exchanger. In one heat exchanger, it is a simple hot stream coming in, getting cooled down, cold stream coming in, getting heated up. In the second case, we are having a bypassing of the cold stream. Now let us forget the options right now, but what is the difference between these two? Okay, the question was saying that what can be said about the temperature in these two cases, this one temperature and this temperature and what can be said about the area? This is area 1 and this is area 2. What can be commented whether they will be same or they will be different and what can be commented about T2 and this T2? All uh, the other information in these two problems are completely same means these temperatures are same in both the cases these two temperatures are same in both the cases the flow rates are same in both the cases clear so first of all let me tell you that what can be said about the temperatures t2 in this case let us call it t2 and let us call it t2 dash in the examination they were using a different symbol okay now in this question suppose this stream is getting heated up to the temperature T2. This stream, some mass flow rate is entering. Let me take some random values. Suppose 10 kg was entering here, 10 kg per hour, right? And of course, 10 kg is going to leave. Mass is not going to change. Now here also 10 kg per hour was entering. But out of that 10 kg per hour, suppose 3 kg per hour was bypassed. So what is entering in the system? It is 7 kg per hour. Now this 3 kg per hour, when gets mixed with this 7 kg per hour coming at a, some temperature, the final resulting temperature is T2 and the flow rate of course remains same. Clear? Now if you understand the process of mixing, this 3 kg per hour is at a temperature T1. If you have studied the concept of bypassing, when a stream is split into two parts, all the uh, properties, the composition, the temperature remain same. So this stream is also at a temperature T1, this stream is also at a temperature T1. When this lower temperature stream mixes with this higher temperature stream, let us call this temperature as T dash. When this lower temperature stream mixes with this higher temperature stream, the resulting temperature is T2, which is same as before. This was given in the problem. Now, by basic logic, we can understand that this temperature T dash must be higher than T2. Why? Because after mixing, you want something, you want this temperature to decrease and become T2. This T dash is definitely higher than this. Because when you mix something at a lower temperature, when you mix a stream which is present at a lower temperature to this exit stream, the temperature of this exit, exit stream is definitely going to decrease. And therefore, this temperature has to be higher than T2 if the final temperature is equal to T2. I hope you are getting my point. When streams are getting mixed, the higher temperature stream temperature is going to decrease, right? So this T dash must be higher than T2. Fine. So ultimately, when the bypassing is taking place, the mass which is entering the heat exchanger has decreased. According to Q is equal to MCP delta T, the mass which is entering the temperature uh, heat exchanger has decreased. But definitely, now this mass has to be heated to a higher temperature. So the delta T has increased. So what can be said about uh, you can know what can be said about the heat which has been supplied to this mass which is entering? The heat is exactly same. And if the heat supplied is exactly same, the temperature of the hot stream in this case should be exactly same because it is losing the same amount of heat. So T2 in this case and T2 in this case must be same. Right, the mass which is entering the heat exchanger has decreased. So most of the students are going to think that okay, if the mass is decreased, then less heat will be required. But no, 
when the stream is getting mixed i want the same final temperature so this less mass has to be heated to a higher temperature so less mass high temperature it means same q right so if same q then the hot stream has to lose same amount of heat as in the first case so the temperature exit temperature must be same right now the students are going to make mistake here that if same amount of heat has been transferred then definitely the area is same but area is not same now area when you talk about area then this equation is not applicable when you talk about area then q is equal to u a delta t lm <coughs> From this equation area is calculated right now in this case you have uh, understood that q is same in both the cases nothing no information is mentioned about u so you cannot you cannot say that okay u is going to change or what value should be uh, we should take for you let us keep u as same right let us talk about the delta t lm term and then we can comment about the area let us take some examples here some values here in this case the cold stream is suppose entering at a temperature of 30 degrees celsius and the same temperature is here as well 30 degrees celsius and it is getting heated up to 70 degrees celsius suppose right while the hot stream is coming at let's say it is coming at 150 degrees celsius and it is leaving it is a counter current heat exchanger the information was given in the question and it is leaving at uh, let's say uh, 80 degrees celsius so how to make this diagram the hot stream is coming from here it is entering at 150 degrees celsius and leaving at 80 degrees celsius the cold stream is coming at 30 degrees celsius and then leaving at 70 degrees celsius in the second case there is no change in the profile of the hot stream which is coming at 150 degrees celsius and leaving at 80 degrees celsius right but what can be said about the cold stream it is entering at 30 degrees celsius but it is leaving at this temperature which is higher than 70 degrees celsius do not consider this for the designing area of the heat exchanger this is the effect of mixing right what is the effect considered in area this temperature and this temperature now this t dash is definitely higher than t2 so the exit temperature must be something around let's suppose 90 fine so what can be said about the value of delta t lm now if you see this the delta t lm in this particular case will be less and if delta t lm is less the area a2 in the second case is definitely higher than area a1 in the first case right most of the students are going to make mistake here that if the temperatures of the hot stream are same it means the area is also same but area depends upon this equation u a delta t lm so definitely area in the second case has to be higher than area in the first case now these kind of explanation you will not find in the books or you will not find in any other any you know any books or any explanation or any website these things you have to understand by the basic concepts you can uh, observe here that there is no such uh, numerical or there is no such big concept only basic concepts have been used the concept of bypassing the concept of mixing and the concept of mcp delta t and ua delta t lm only very basic questions but the options were given such that you can easily get confused so i hope this explanation also clears some of the concept of heat exchanger design right so students the third question is from heat transfer and this question involves the concept the combined concept of condensation unsteady state heat transfer right and energy balance or mass balance everything is combined in this situation okay now what is there there is a closed container right vapor is present here and the temperature of vapor is t sat means you can assume that the vapor is present at its saturation temperature only latent heat has to be removed the latent heat of condensation of vapor is given as lambda once you remove the latent heat it is going to condense right now because the volume of the container is fixed as the vapor is condensing the condensate height is growing with time the height of the condensate or the thickness of the condensate is denoted by del the thermal conductivity of the condensate is k okay and it is given in the problem that the heat transfer is taking place by condensation the temperature of the liquid is maintained below t set of course how by the help of some flowing cooling water right now in this problem there are few things which are important first of all you must understand that this is a problem of unsteady state 
transfer right so why unsteady state because things are changing with time what is changing with time here what do you think what is changing with time is the temperature of the vapor changing with time yes or no no is the temperature of the liquid changing with time yes or no no fine so what is changing here with time you must say that sir the height is changing or if i say in other words with this height what is changing the volume of the liquid is changing the mass of the liquid is changing so this is unsteady state problem but the mass is changing it is unsteady state with respect to mass of the condensate so to solve this problem to find a relation between this thickness and time you have to write unsteady state balance now the question arises you should write unsteady state mass balance or unsteady state energy balance can you answer this question okay you may you may be able to solve this problem but when you are able to answer these kind of questions then only you will be able to understand the question conceptually very clearly and these kind of understanding is important actually okay so i'm going to write here unsteady state balance but please note that because temperature is not changing so unsteady state energy balance is not required unsteady state mass balance is required because mass is changing here that is how you have to see a problem that is how you have to conceptually analyze a problem right so in minus out what is the mass which is coming in here so is, is any mass coming in here definitely yes the mass which is coming in here is the mass accumulated by condensation so definitely this term will be there what is the mass living out from the system nothing and is there any accumulation of mass definitely yes so what is the rate by which mass is coming so now when you are writing this equation please be careful that the unit of this in is mass by time accumulation mass by time so you, so you multiply and divide the given quantities so that the unit becomes mass better clear so by what rate heat is coming in so because it is taking place by conduction so let me write here k fine suppose the cross section area i don't know whether it is circular or it is rectangular so let me write here only a the cross section area fine k a temperature difference t sat is higher temperature t is lower temperature k a delta t divided by del i hope you know that the fourier law of heat conduction now please note that the balance which you are writing here is the balance at a particular instant of time now that instant of time k is k a is a t set and t these things are not changing with time but what you can say about this del this del is changing with respect to time so the del which i am writing here is the del at that particular instant of time at which you are writing the balance fine now this is the rate by which heat is coming in can you guess the units here it is the formula for q so the units must be energy by time you have to write mass by time so how to write it whenever you want to relate energy heat and mass there is a interlink between heat and mass and that interlink is lambda what is the unit of lambda generally it is kilojoule per kg it may be kilojoule per mole but most of the times in examination it is expressed as kilojoule per kg so where you have to place kilo, uh, this lambda multiply by lambda or divide by lambda just check the units no need to learn everything just check the units everywhere this is kilojoule by time what i want i want kg per time so if i divide it by lambda suppose then it becomes kilojoule per kg what i have kg by time so simply divide it by lambda you have kg by time you are having the units of this n term the term is complete no need to multiply or divide by anything else minus 0 is equal to accumulation d by dt what is getting accumulated mass of course so what is the volume of this i don't know the area but definitely i can write a what is the height del definitely this del is the same del ha na so this del must be a function of time please note that this del uh, t is not being multiplied with del it is just denoting that del is a function of time now this becomes volume right volume into density becomes mass so i hope the units are volume into density that is mass mass divided by time the units are fine right so 
now this is just a differential equation you have to solve it fine and to solve this differential equation you have to use the uh, you know separation of variables similar variables on the same side so once you solve this differential equation uh, you are getting del i'm removing this t sign in the parenthesis so del d of del area gets cancelled from both side and then it becomes is equal to on the left hand side it is uh, k t set minus t divided by lambda and then rho i guess okay is equal to del d del dt dt is equal to del d del fine you integrate it from 0 to t from 0 to del so that i can get the relation between del and t so it will become del square by 2 and this is going to become t so what is this this is del square by 2 though so it should become a twice of k t sat minus t divided by lambda rho fine multiplied by t and the entire thing should be present in the square root sign Okay, that is the final result. See how basic the question is and what are the things that I have used here to solve this problem. I have not used a single expression from condensation. It is just the very basic of heat transfer that is the Fourier's law. Very basic of balance that is the total mass balance at unsteady state. So if you have understood the concepts having if you have the clarity of all these concepts then only you can attempt these kind of problems now most of the students have a problem in this particular question most of the books in in fact i can say not even a single book i have found most of the faculties as well they are giving wrong solution for this particular problem okay because if the problem is having some kind of options where you have two and there's one option when there is no two so if you are not solving the problem like writing this unsteady state balance then this 2 will not appear and that is the wrong answer which is given in most of the online as well as offline resources. Fine. So I hope this problem is clear to you. Let us move to the fourth problem. Students the fourth problem I am taking is from gate 2019 and this one is a combination of you can say the combination of concepts of material balance, recycling some concepts of CRE as well. So PC and CRE, this is a combined question. Uh, it was for two marks. And uh, many students have requested for the explanation of this problem. There is a CSTR. In this CSTR, a reaction is taking place and the rate of that reaction is given as 10 to the power 3 XA, XB. Right? The units are also given. Okay, so let me rewrite the units. Let me write the minus RA here. Minus RA is equal to 10 power 3 XA XB kilo mole per meter cube per hour. Fine. The volume of this vessel or the reactor CSTR is 10 meter cube. The process is taking place at steady state. From here you have pure A. From here you have pure B. There is nothing else in the reactants. These reactants are mixed. And then go to the uh, reactor. From here, recycle stream joins the reactor. Okay, this is a CSTR. The leaving stream goes like this to the distillation column. From this distillation column, one stream is taken out as the recycle stream, the top stream of the column, which is given here, and the bottom stream is taken as product. It was given in the problem that the products coming out are 100 kilo mole per hour of C. Clear? Now there are some important informations which I am listing down here. The process is taking place at steady state. The reaction stoichiometry is A plus B giving C and there is no A or B present as in this product. This is the recycle stream which contains only A and B. Right. The question asks that what is the value of mole fraction of XB, sorry, mole fraction of B in the CSTR 
that minimizes the recycle rate R. Fine. So if you see the problem at a very first time, it is very hard to you know start the problem from at a, at a from a particular point. Most of the students they don't even get a hint how to attempt this problem. Now in this problem, first of all, you see this problem as this system, the overall system. The reaction is A plus B giving C. Now see that 100 moles of C you are getting, fine. So can you guess how many moles of A and how many moles of B are entering the system? I'm giving you the hint that the process is taking place at steady state. Nothing is getting accumulated. Think about it for a minute. How many moles? Can you say that? Can you say that for sure uh, how many moles of A and how many moles of B are entering the system? See, if the system has to be at steady state, look how many moles of C are getting formed? 100 moles. There is no C present here, only A and B. So how many moles of C are present here? Definitely, I can say that this contains 100 mole C. Uh, of course, some A and B are present. I'm going to write it later, but definitely it is having 100 mole of C. So in the reactor as well, 100 moles of C are getting formed. So for 100 moles of C getting formed, how many moles of B should react? 100. How many moles of A should react? 100. Now 100 moles of A and 100 moles of B should react to give 100 mole of C and no A and no B is coming here. So can I say that, please use simple logic, can I say that B has to be 100 mole and A has to be 100 mole. Then only 100 mole of A and 100 mole of B is going to react, fine. And when they are going to react, 100 mole of C will be formed and no A or no B will be left out of this inside the reactor. If you say that, sir, what, hap what will happen if I take suppose 100 mole of A and 150 mole of B? Then each cycle, 50 mole of B will be accumulated in the system and you cannot have steady state. Again, this is called the conceptual clarity and these kind of questions are based on the conceptual clarity. Otherwise, whatever hard you may try, these kind of questions are difficult to solve unless you have the crystal clear concepts in your mind. Right? So uh, that is why this, these four problems that I'm discussing today are the difficult problems and this difficulty is faced by almost every student who is preparing for gate chemical engineering. Okay, so uh, okay, so I explained that definitely A has to be 100, B has to be 100. If it is not 100, if it is more than 100, less than 100, then there will be accumulation. That is the first thing that you should that uh, should strike to your mind while solving this problem. Also, now see the stoichiometry. One, one. Now see the A and B moles. Hundred mole, hundred mole. I hope you understand that A and B are in stoichiometric proportion. It means that in the entire process, everywhere, everywhere you take any point, everywhere N A must be equal to N B. Fine. So this is another point. You can also take it. Let us take it N. Now, what is there? What is here? Here we have Na and some moles of Nb. No A is going here. No B is going here. Whatever A and B is present is also present here. Na and Nb. So Na plus Nb makes it R. What is present here? Here you have how many moles of A? 100 plus Na. How many moles of B? 100 plus Nb. That 100 moles and 100 moles are getting reacted, forming 100 mole of C that is taken out. This Na and Nb is continuously recycled. That is how you can have steady state in this problem. This is the very basic understanding of this problem. Fine. Now, let me write the balance on B. And on which system you are writing the balance? This balance on B, I am writing for this particular system. That is for the CSTR. Okay, so how much B is entering? 100 plus NB. How many moles of B is leaving? Only B, right? So NB. How many moles is reacting? 10 cube XA XB multiplied by the volume that is 10 is equal to 0. Balance on B for the CSTR. NB, NB gets cancelled. Obviously, what is whatever B is entering from here is leaving. So it gets cancelled. And from here, you can get 
x a multiplied by x b is equal to uh, 0 0.01. Fine. Now let us talk about this tree. Now you know that this is a CSTR. What is the property of a CSTR? The concentration inside the reactor and the concentration of the stream leaving must be same. So can you say that XA is equal to NA by 100 plus NA plus NB and XB is equal to NB by 100 plus NA plus NB. Fine. And we also know that XA XB is equal to 0 0.1. So in this problem, you can write that 0 0.01. I'm sorry, XA into XB is 0 0.01. It's not 0 0.1, it's 0 0.01, okay. So 0 0.01 is equal to x into xb and you also know that na and b is equal to n, everywhere they are going to be same. So can I write this into this, it becomes n square, 100 plus 2n whole square, 100 plus 2n whole square. Fine, we take square root, this becomes 0 0.1 is equal to n divided by 100 plus 2n, right. From here, the value of n can be easily calculated. So please try to calculate, I hope the value of n is equal to uh, 12.5. Fine. Once you get the value of n, then you can calculate the value of xb. So that is 12.5, 12.5 divided by 100 plus um, 12.5 that is 25. That is 12.5 divided by 125. Right. So that gives you 0 0.1. That is the answer for this problem. So I hope students, these four problems are now clear to you. Okay. So keep solving rest of the problems of previous year gate examination. And if you have any query, you can always comment in the comment section. Okay. Thank you very much for following all these videos.